Thanks for joining us today. I'm Gabe Garish, owner of Backwoods Pursuit, and today we're going to take a look at the Kite Optics Stabilized Monocular. This is a 12 by 25 image stabilized monocular, and we were able to test this over the last six to eight months in some pretty extreme conditions, well below zero degrees Fahrenheit with this monocular. Wanted to see just how well it would perform out in the field. I want to bring you that list of pros and cons that we have after using this out in the field help you decide if it's something that might be a good addition to your kit and how the performance is for a stabilized monocular. Really appreciate it. If you hit that subscribe button and follow us on Facebook and Instagram, I'll put links to that down in the description as well as a link to the website, backwardspursuit.com. We have a ton of gear reviews over there. Go check those out. And I'll put a link to the Kite Optics Image Stabilized Monocular down in the description so you can check it out for yourself. Let's get started. All right, to get started, some of the specs on the Kite Optics Image Stabilized Monocular. Again, this is a 12 by 25. It's kind of an interesting combination in that you have 12 magnification with a 25 millimeter objective. Of course, that's gonna affect your low light performance, which we'll touch on in a moment. But some more specs on here, you have a nice uh, eye cup here that has four positions that you can choose from. And it is nice and tight, you don't have any play there. You do, of course, have the image stabilization, which can be turned on and off here. It takes one AA battery. This comes in at 11.1 .1 ounces, so it is nice and lightweight, particularly for an image stabilized monocular. Your focus mechanism here is interestingly out on the objective here, and so you're gonna utilize your, your uh, second hand here to focus that, and it is pretty quick focus, so you can bring something into focus very, very quickly. Uh, that is one interesting thing we'll touch on more in here in a moment. Uh, Size-wise, you're about 2.9 inches in height and 6.8 inches in length, so it's still fairly compact given what you're getting out of this unit. Now, the field of view on this is at 5.2 degrees, which translates roughly to 273 feet at 1,000 yards. So because you have a 12x magnification and a 25 millimeter objective, you do have a smaller field of view. Now, you also have a 30-year warranty on this on the unit and a two-year warranty on the electronics. It's not waterproof or gas purge, so you want to be cautious if you are in wet conditions with this. If you have a, a rainstorm coming in, uh, be careful to put this away. Make sure that it is not going to be saturated. It is water resistant, but it's not waterproof, so don't submerge this either. And you do have a 30-hour 30, uh, 30 battery life with that one AA battery. Uh, similar to the unit here, the, the APC stabilized binoculars, which use two AA batteries that last 60 hours. So their electronics are right on par with what they are in the binocular as well. Now, a couple of unique features with this stabilized monocular before we dive into the performance and the pros and cons that we found. The eye cup here is really nice and it doesn't have any play in it. It's super comfortable as well. That's a definite plus with this unit. Uh, a lot of eye cups that we've tested have a lot of play in their movement and their click stops are not real defined or they just have some play in between the click stops. These are really nice in that it doesn't have that. Something else that's pretty unique about this is the objective here is where you focus the unit. Other monoculars that we've tested have that focus uh, mechanism here on the top and use your hand. So there's definitely pros and cons to that. The top unit, if it's, if it's focus, the mechanism is on the top here can be a little bit easier to use with one hand by itself as far as bringing it into focus. This being out on the objective does require, if you're holding it with one hand, you do have to focus with that second hand. So that can be a good or a bad thing depending on how you want to look at it. That's going to help your stability even more and allow you to find focus that very easily. But it's harder to use that with one hand, so you, you do need that second hand to focus the unit. Um, but the image stabilization on this kind of uh, counteracts that in that if you turn that on, uh, when that unit is turned on with the button right there, it makes it so it's very, very easily uh, used with one hand. So you certainly don't need that second hand for stabilization. That image stabilization does a fantastic job. So it kind of depends on your use case. Uh, once you get that focus though, or relatively close, you can turn the image stabilization on and use it with one hand very, very easily. All right, I'm gonna jump out and throw the digiscoping adapter on here and show you just how much difference that image stabilization makes in this monocular. It is fantastic. It makes the world of difference, particularly if you're using this with one hand. So let's go jump out and take a look at that. 
All right, we came out here where we can see about 1,500 yards across the draw here. I'm gonna put the digiscoping adapter on the Kite Mono, and we're gonna see what the difference is between that stabilized and unstabilized when you're looking at something quite a long ways away. Now, as you can see with the image stabilization turned off, you do have a quite a bit of shake, and I'm just holding this with one hand. Um, now, if we go ahead and flip that over to stabilization on, it does make a big difference here. Makes a, a really big difference in being able to pick out an object if you're wanting to to uh, say look for deer or elk or something a long ways away. That's again about 1,500 yards away. Flip that image stabilization off. It makes a big difference if you're able to spot say a, a mule deer or something across the draw. Flip that back on. Just makes a huge difference. As you can see, you have real nice color contrast as well, and really good uh, edge-to-edge -edge clarity with this uh, kite monocular. It does a really good job. Again, you're at 12x here. Here we are again at another hillside about 1,500 yards away. Holding it with one hand, you know, fair amount of shake. It's kind of difficult to make that a usable image with one hand. Flipping that stabilization back on, it really makes a big, big deal. Again, nice color contrast, good edge-to-edge -edge clarity. It's not perfect in the stabilization. Obviously, there's a little bit of shake in there, but that is holding this with one hand and with this phone and, and the adapter on here, so it, it does a pretty darn good job. It's going to be even better than this if you put this up to your eye. But uh, with this stabilization here on, it makes it really, really usable at that 12X, even at 1,500 yards like this. All right, now some of the things that we loved about this unit, probably first and foremost, is the optical performance. It was far exceeding our expectations with this unit. Very, very good optics, excellent edge-to-edge -edge clarity, very good color contrast, and the overall image resolution was just far superior to other monoculars that we've tried. Add into that the image stabilization, and it really made a massive difference, made this unit extremely usable, very nice and easy to hold with one hand. It's nice and lightweight and compact. You can see it fits in the palm of my hand very well. This little V-shape on the bottom makes for a very comfortable hand holding. And it's just something you can use very easily with one hand. Flip on that stabilization with the button on the top. You can do that without a second hand at all and just do your scanning and whatnot with this unit. Very, very good. You do have that, that second hand needed to focus there. That's something we didn't love about this because uh, being a monocular, sometimes you want to just be able to use the one hand, but you do need at least for a little bit of time that second hand to focus the out the objective there. And once that's focused, you can go ahead and do your scanning with one hand. But uh, the but you do need that second hand at some time. So very impressive though with the optics. Very impressed with the way that this eye cup is so nice and tight. It doesn't have any play in there. And we were also extremely impressed with this performance in the image stabilization department. It does exceptionally well with stabilizing that image. Like I mentioned, you can use this with one hand very, very easily. But we were able to put this through an ultimate test and had this out in temperatures in negative 12 degrees Fahrenheit. So extremely cold, way below freezing conditions, and it performed flawlessly. It never had any issues with the image stabilization acting up, and it just worked really, really well. And so we were very, very pleased with the electronics and how they worked, even in super cold temperatures. Of course, you used it in warmer temperatures as well, and it did great there, but really a well-performing unit, even in those super cold temperatures. Now, we also like that it is a AA battery, so a super common battery, easy to find, easy to use, easy to throw an extra one in your pack. If you happen to burn through a battery, it's easy to take that extra one to use with this. Combined with the 12X magnification, that's just a really nice magnification. For a monocular, it just can provide so much more in that uh, the image magnification as it combined with that image stability that you get with the image stabilization. It made that 12X really, really usable. If you've used a 12X binocular or monocular, trying to hold it with one hand is uh, shaky at best and almost unusable in some situations. But with that stabilization on there, it makes that extremely usable and very user-friendly to do that. So really like the, the 12X in there. That 25 millimeter objective though, does create that smaller field of view. So that's probably one of our biggest dislikes of that is how small the field of view is because of that. So it's a give and take there. It might be just fine for you. It might not be if you're doing a lot of longer range uh, viewing, that 12X is not as big of a deal because you have that field of view is gonna open up more the longer out you look. But if you are looking at uh, say hillsides or trees or whatnot and it's not that far away, that 12X and that small field of view can make it a little more difficult to locate the object that you're wanting to view. Uh, so there's some pros and cons, there's some give and take with that 12X and that 25 millimeter objective. Of course, 25 millimeter objective does make that nice and compact. You don't have a real large unit or whatnot here, but of course you have that the give and take of that field of view. So 
Uh, it's going to depend on your use case, on whether or not that's a big deal to you. Uh, but if you're just doing a lot of scanning, say you're looking for animals or whatnot, whatnot using a monocular, the 12X can feel a little bit like you're missing something or want, you leave you wanting a little bit bigger field of view. Now, one other thing to consider with this 12 by 25 configuration is that it's not going to do great in low light. That 25 millimeter objective combined with a 12X magnification is going to give you a pretty small exit pupil, therefore not letting in a lot of light. So if you do need good low light performance, you may want to consider a larger objective and or lesser magnification. Just one thing to consider with this unit, low light performance is not its strong suit compared to say a 10 by 42 monocular or something of that nature. Now one of the other things we thought could be better with this is while this focus wheel is nice and smooth and it does have a nice texture on the outside to move that, the focus is not that fine and it moves pretty quickly. So it is very quick to bring something into focus, but to find focus that it does take some pretty small movements there. So it would be kind of nice to have a little bit finer focus in there. You certainly can get around that just fine. You'll get used to it, but it does make for a little bit more difficult in getting that fine focus. And it's in that position where you do need that second hand. So it would kind of be nice to have that available on that, that the top of your hand over here. So you could truly operate this with one hand, um, but it is out on the objective there. So that is just the way that you have to go ahead and go about focusing this unit. Now we also wish that this was waterproof and gas purged like the binoculars here, which are both of those things. That would just aid in this being a better unit to take out in inclement weather if you're going to have rain or potentially be doing some creek crossings or any situation where you might get this wet. It is water resistant like I mentioned, but it's not waterproof and not gas purged. So you are going to have that potential for that weather causing problems with this unit more so than the binocular here. Now a, a kind of a nitpicky thing here is that uh, you can see here, this is the, the eyepiece side and this is the objective. The place where you attach, if you're going to say put this in a binocular harness or something of that nature, the attachment point is out here towards the objective. So what that wanted to do while we're using that is you attach it here, have it say attached to your binocular harness here or whatever it is that you're, you put it in your pocket or whatnot. It would want to flip over like that because the top of that attachment point is right there. And then when you would have to pull out to use it, you want to flip it back over like that. So it would be nice if that was moved to the back here. So it would just slide in and out and not want to flip over on you. Not a huge deal, but just something that uh, in that design that if we're being nitpicky, we would, would like to see that placement change just a little bit. Now, it would also be nice if this had an automatic turn off and on like the binoculars do. But it's kind of difficult to do that because these APC stabilized binoculars are based on their position being up or down like that, which turns the unit off, off or on automatically. So it's a lot more difficult with the monocular to do that because you might be storing this in your pack sideways or, or whatnot. So I get why it doesn't have that feature, but that is something we loved about the binoculars here. So if there's a way to do that in the monocular, that would be awesome. It's not really a con necessarily on these, but certainly something that we loved about the binoculars that the monocular does not have. So that is the Kite Optics Image Stabilized Monocular in the 12 by 25 version. Just an excellent monocular, particularly given that image stabilization, as you saw, that just makes a massive difference. Makes 12X extremely usable, even with one hand. Certainly worth something that you want to have in a monocular. Optics were fantastic in this. Great edge to edge clarity and great overall performance. Nice color rendition as well and color contrast. So go check these out again. I'll put a link to this down in the description for you so you can check them out for yourself. Thanks for watching here today and we will see you next time.